Tom Barnes Chicago scene at Eli's Cheesecake here in Chicago's northwest side. Impossible not to stop and smell this whole entire thing. This is their headquarters, everything made here in Chicago. I'm gonna talk to the founder's son, Mark, and also the pastry chef on that giant big piece of cheesecake that they make. That's their signature thing for Founders Day. That is the Chicago scene now. Let's go inside and say hi. It's never a bad day when you're surrounded by cheesecake and I am in the R&D lab here at Eli's and I'm here with the son of the famous name. This is Mark. How you doing, Mark? Doing great today. So happy Founders Day. Uh, that's coming up here in a second and that's why I'm here. But for people who still have not heard of Eli's and if you're born in Chicago and you haven't, I don't know where you've been, but if you haven't, explain Eli's and the legacy that is uh, the relationship to mm -hmm. Chicago. Well, my father, Eli Shulman, uh, was born in Chicago in 1910. He went into the restaurant business in 1940 and had a great career in the restaurant business in Chicago. Eli's Stage Delicatessen on Oak Street, Eli's uh, leading to Eli's uh, Place for Steak on Chicago Avenue near Michigan, near the Water Tower. And it was there that he had a dream that he wanted to create a signature dessert for his steakhouse. And that became Eli's Cheesecake. And in 1980, uh, Mayor Byrne, Arnie Morton, Rich Melman had the first Taste of Chicago that was in front of Tribune Tower on Michigan Avenue. Yeah. And that's where my dad debuted his cheesecake outside the restaurant. And that really created uh, this great opportunity for us to start slowly selling restaurants in Chicago, then retailers, then airlines, and we started to sell around the country and ultimately around the world. And today, Eli's Cheesecake is still a family business, now third right. generation with my daughter, Alana. Yeah, I think that's very important for people to know that it's still Chicago family owned, which is what Chicago loves about and, talking about Chicago. And all made in Chicago. Our bakery is located at Forest Preserve Drive in Montrose next to Wright College. Yep. And so we've been able to expand here and really with the great location of Chicago in the center of the country. We're close to O'Hare. And we have just over the years developed so many different types of cheesecakes, different types of desserts, of bars. It's a very fun and uh, place you like to be to eat. We do a lot of events. Uh, yeah, you guys show up when, uh, you know, one of our sports teams are doing well and they do that bet where they have all the things about Chicago. Eli's is always in there. But from block parties out in the middle of, you know, the Norwood Park neighborhood to downtown parades. It seems like Eli's is always there offering up what makes Chicago so unique. And my father always believed charity will never bust you. And we've really been involved with the community of giving back. At the holidays, we have a giving tree where all of our associates are given cakes to take to a charity of their choice. We're partners with Feeding America and the Northern Illinois Food Bank. We partner with Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences with scholarships and internships. So being in the community, giving back to the community is such an important part of what we're about at Eli's. And celebrating Founders Day uh, has got to be part of that legacy. And that's why I'm here today, because I'm going to meet the executive pastry chef, uh, Laurel, in a second. What is she going to demo for me here? Well, Founders Day is coming up celebrating what would have been my father's 112th birthday. And at Eli's, no celebration would be complete without something big. So executive pastry chef Laurel Boger will be showing you how we decorate and finish a giant Eli's slice of cheesecake. I can't wait. I'm going to check it out. Uh, thank you very much, Mark, for uh, letting me hang out in the R&D department here. And not tempting as it is, not sampling any of the product, but thank you very much and congratulations on the Founders Day. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Now it's on to uh, Chef in the other uh, back room here. All right, check that out. The Big Slice birthday cake is one of the things Eli's is known for. The other thing might be just Chicago style cheesecake in general. And I brought in an expert. This is executive pastry chef, Laurel. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I am wonderful. So, Chicago style cheesecake mm -hmm. versus the rest of the world. What's the difference? We know, we know it's the best, but what makes it the best? It, um, when uh, Eli Shulman decided to uh, make a cheesecake for his restaurant in uh, Chicago, Eli's Place for Steak, he kind of broke all the rules. Um, he 
mixed on high, he baked hot, all the things I learned at culinary school not to do with cheesecake, <laughs> and it created an amazing product. So the other thing that is different, besides the mixing method and the baking style, is we use um, cultured sour cream. Mm -hmm. A lot of cheesecakes use milk or heavy cream, but we use sour cream, and then a lot of cream cheese. So can't go wrong with cream cheese, Can't right? go wrong with cream cheese. What he ended up uh, developing then is this very creamy style cheesecake. And instead of going citrusy, which a lot of cheesecakes go, he added um, Madagascar vanilla. So it almost tastes like, uh, like better vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Really creamy. Wonderful, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we so love it. What are you gonna show us today here um, on the eve of Founders Day? Well, we wanted to do, was, you know, don't make no small plans, so mm -hmm. we're gonna make no small slices here for right. uh, uh, Eli's Founders Day. Um, we love the big cakes, so we did a big, we're going to do a big slice. So let's get started, yeah. all right, on how to do this. As you can see, we have two beautiful cheesecakes here, mm -hmm. that beautiful hot bake that gives you that wonderful brown coloring on the outside, a little bit of souffleing. Yep. Very traditional, that is, that is a signature Eli's cheesecake. Okay. You can eyeball it if you want, I don't recommend that, so I, made, <laughs> I took a round circle and kind of measured, found the center, and made a slice about the size I like. Okay. Okay, cut it out, then you have your template. Okay. What is nice about this is if you wanted to do a sheet cake, you could do this back and forth on a sheet cake oh, as sure, well. Yeah. All right, but pretty simple. The one thing you have to remember is you're gonna to wanna to do this with the cheesecake frozen. Okay, good to know. Cheesecake, frozen cheesecake. Cheesecake always slices better frozen. Always. Okay. People ask what's the best way to slice cheesecake. I'm going to say frozen. Otherwise, you use a wet knife. But okay. we're going to start with a frozen cheesecake here. I'm going to line it up, as you can see. Just kind of mark it. All right. And you're going to use the largest chef knife you have. Preferably you, a sharp one, right? Yes, because you're not <laughs> going to want to go through it and try to cut it. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're going to want to set it up. Ooh. Now where I'm looking at is right here to make sure my knife is straight, okay? Okay. So as I go down with my tip, and then come down with my heel, and then rock it back and forth, voila. We're gonna repeat that. Again, looking so that my knife is straight, you don't want it angled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big piece. That's a big piece, okay? We're going to set our bowl over here. We're going to set our slice up. Well, first, before I do that, I'm sorry. First, we're going to trim off so that it'll be level. Okay. So I take a smaller knife. I'm just going to trim this. But I'm going to simple. save it, okay? We don't need to waste anything. So that goes in the bowl. And then this goes here. All right. And then I'm going to set it on. You're going to want to build this right on the plate you're going to serve it on. Mm -hmm. It's hard to move once it's made. Okay. okay. Bring my next one. Repeat. I don't want this little tip, so I'm going to cut that off. But I like this little bit of a ridge here, mm -hmm. so I'm going to keep it for the top layer. Okay. Okay? I like that. And I'm just going to set these over here. Okay. Now, right now I'm going to leave those alone for a second. All right. Save half to make into cheesecake frosting. Mm -hmm. oh. Not cream cheese frosting. Cheesecake, cheesecake frosting. frosting. Wonderful. The other half we're going to save to make into little cheesecake balls. And that's what these are right okay. here. All right. So... I'm just going to cut these up and throw them in a bowl so that they can get a little, because right now they're really, really hard. Okay, this is frozen cheesecake. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to cut these all up and put them in a bowl and let them thaw. And it's only going to take about a half hour. Okay. So now I have to make the cheesecake, the part for the cheesecake frosting, and I don't want any crumbs now. So. We get rid of those crumbs. Now All this right, was good. a clean table, so they go in. No waste. No waste. Okay. So now we're going to take these and treat them a little bit like you were going to um, peel a, a pineapple. Remember that, how you peel a pineapple? You sure. kind of Or a watermelon? So I'm taking off the crust this time. All right. Now, if you guys really like crust in your cheesecake, your little cheesecake truffles, you could put this in there. You could set it aside and just snack on it. You decide. Okay. I think I have enough crust, so I'm going to set it aside. And now I'm taking off all of the, the colored part, the, okay. the brown, that beautiful brown that we wanted, right, with the, the Eli's baking. And see how you just, just like when you were doing a pineapple, I'm taking all of that off because mm -hmm. I want my frosting to not have specks in it, right? I want my frosting to be one even color. Okay. But it doesn't go to waste. It all just goes into the bowl for the truffles. So there you see you can take kind of peel if you want, but you really just want that to be nice 
beautiful blonde cheesecake. See that? Mm -hmm. And you set that aside. And then, to save time and with the magic television and a lot of assistance, Look at that. there is my softened cheesecake. Okay. There is my softened cut up. Cut up. Wonderful. For cheesecake truffles. Yeah, look at that. So these we're not going to use right now. Okay. So I'm going to put them in a bowl over here till I'm ready for them, okay? Okay. And we'll get that out of the way. All right. Now I'm taking this, and what I want to show you is that now it is soft. See how that's soft, like softened butter? Yep. Okay. I want to mix that with, I should have had this ready. That's okay. Okay. Here's some pre made decorating frosting okay, okay? Mm -hmm. and it's really just half and half okay you can make it to whatever you want so but you want your two to be the similar consistency if this had been really cold it would have gone in here the butter in here would have turned frozen and you'd get all these lumps mm -hmm. so these are both about the same consistency as you can see so I'm going to put them in my mixer here okay and put about half frosting and cheesecake. Mm. Doesn't this Looks look good? amazing. Yep. I know. We love cheesecake frosting. It's got nothing on cream cheese frosting. All right. And then we just turn it up. on. Go for it. We just turn it on, but it, it, it doesn't want to go. We have a technical difficulty. No, I turned on the wrong. <laughs> it's I all right. I was turning on the I'm making lock. you nervous today. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I don't even know how to use my mixer. This is crazy. All right. So that's in a mix for how long? Um, Tell it looks like frosting. I don't know. That doesn't take long, right? Nope, not It's looking at all. like frosting to me. Let me test it out. Or do you want to test it out? Uh, you, you test it out. Okay. Otherwise, I might drop the whole thing and okay. I'll stop. But see how it's eat. a nice consistency now for spreading? Mm -hmm. See that? Isn't that lovely? That's all you want, something you can spread. I'm going to scrape the bowl. This is a key in everything you do in baking because stuff wants to stick to the bottom. Mm -hmm. You don't want those lumps down there. So I'm scraping really well setting it aside and just going to give it one last little woo whip okay okay thanks and that looks nice to me i'm done now it's important to kind of stick your cake down because when you're frosting it it's going to move i don't want it to move nope. okay so i'm going to move this off to the side really quick and put just a little frosting right where i want it to go ah, that's a fun little tip okay okay then all cake should have filling, so let's put a little in the middle. Yeah, right? Cheesecake right? on cheesecake. What's cheesecake on that? cheesecake, yes. Yeah, so this is the cheesecake filled with cheesecake frosting. Doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, this is good for my resolutions of 2022. Yes. <laughs> the resolution to only eat good stuff. Yep, exactly. And this is good stuff. Okay. Then we're going to set this on top. Give it a little squeeze. Oh, okay. So squeeze it. Definitely like That's a fine. grilled cheese sandwich almost. Yeah. Okay. I like these. These are great for kind of making smooth sides on cakes. If mm -hmm. you have one, they're bench scrapers. You can find them at most kitchen stores. I'd have a couple of size spatulas here. I got all kinds of tools here. Look at them all. All right. I'm ready. Really, you just need one. Okay. I like to have fun. So first I'm going to clean off any of the stuff that's there. Okay. I don't want crumbs. I'm going to set that aside. Okay. Now we are going to frost the sides to make it look like a full big slice of cheesecake. Okay. Huh. Look at that. Okay. I'm going to go up to the tip. Always be careful around the tip. That's going to be a little softer. So I work my way to that later. Okay. I do the fat sides first then I might get a little on my plate but I can clean all that stuff off later yeah it's part of the fun right especially yes. if you have kids involved exactly this is, this is not going to be an activity that's going to be uh, totally free yes. of a mess right and if you're more comfortable you can also put it in a pastry bag and pipe it on and oh, then sure. smooth okay. it out it really depends on how you like to frost a cake I'm more of a just slap it on there it's like um, like if you were doing drywall you mm -hmm. slap a bunch on always use too much a little on top and look at how that was a perfect amount of frosting here right and I saved a little of the white because I want this to look like the cheesecake and then I want to put a rosette on there that looked like whipped cream or you could put whipped cream 
So, almost done. Key okay. with frosting is to seal the cake with a lot of frosting, okay? Okay. Then, you take the tool and oh, smooth. Just like you said, drywall. Yes, see that, isn't that nice? Then, this is called an offset spatula. So, see how it's offset? Mm -hmm. That's easier for doing the top so that your fingers don't get in it. Oh, These are always nice for that. That's what it's for. Yes. Because sometimes, yeah, if you're coming across, you're like, ooh, my thumb gets in yep, the way. We don't for like sure. That. So, what I have here is a little pan of sprinkles. Okay. okay. So, what you're going to do is set the sprinkles down behind it uh -huh. so that they can fall back in. And you just let them fall back in. Oh, See look at that. that. And then you turn the cake so that you don't have sprinkles all over. And if you have a little bit bigger pan, even better, because this is starting to go around. And then I like to kind of go around the top and create that little crown. Why not, right? One in Rome. One in Rome. <laughs> so we have our little crown. We're looking pretty good, right? I don't mm -hmm. think we've even gone 15 minutes yet. So a little extra sprinkles go in there. All right, now I'm going to clean. So just take something to just clean, right? Now the one thing that's missing, you can finish up, you can have this be the finishing touch, but we like to make it look like a real cheesecake. Mm -hmm. So I want, what's missing is the crust. <clears throat> so what I've taken is some graham crumb here, all right? Graham crumb and oil mm -hmm. and mixed it together. Oh. Now it's gonna be hard to see, but what I'm gonna do is put a little down here. I got you. And, Go and just kind of line it up. Uh-huh. Lining it up, lining it up. See how it's just kind of and then I just kind of press it in. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that. And now it looks like it's on a crust. Okay. You can take this and just kind of press it in. All right, and then we do the other side. Easy peasy, right? Yeah. The last thing I think we're gonna do on this cake is put a big rosette. So you yeah, can just put frosting in a bag. You can cut off the tip. I have a tip, all right? We're going to put a big old, big old rosette. Oh, that looks fantastic. Doesn't it? Need some more sprinkles, because you always need more sprinkles. More sprinkles, more sprinkles. Look at that. I missed a spot here. There we go. There's a couple spots I missed. I'm gonna keep turning around. Sorry about that. That's okay. I'm there just shooting this there. Look at that. So all that done and any kind of frosting there, yep. right? Now you could put a cherry on top. You could put chocolate covered strawberry on top. You could put fudge, but we are going to put pyrotechnics on top because we're celebrating the party yeah, here. Yeah, let's do it. Light it up. Let's see. Light it up. All righty. But we're not quite done yet, right? Because we have some extra cheesecake batter we don't want to use up. Oh, sure, sure. So I'm going to set this aside for a second and go and finish up with our cheesecake truffles. So. All right, so what are we doing now, Laurel? Well, I didn't want to forget about our extra cheesecake here, mm -hmm. so I put it in a bowl. I'm going to mix it up until it kind of gets like a little paste. I don't want to mix it up too much, just enough to mash it, okay? Okay. All right, see how that's all mashed together? Yeah. You can grab it with your hands. I'm going to use an ice cream scoop here, and you're just going to scoop little balls, right? Okay. okay. Yep. Now you're going to want to let those sit in the refrigerator, or freezer, I'm sorry, excuse that's me. A, that's all right. Freeze them up a little bit. Then I have some just some white melties here, just that's what they look like. You melt them in the microwave. This is a great thing to do with kids because one person oh, yeah. can be doing this and the other person can be doing that. And there you have a beautiful little truffle. Fantastic. Isn't that fun? And then and this uh, makes about 18 truffles, so you have, can have a party. There's the final product there. And then, One you know. here. We are so excited for Founders Day. We hope you come down to Eli's Cheesecake World, pick up some cheesecakes and celebrate with us. And let's get this party yeah, look started. At that. Look at that. Come see Laurel. Uh, what's the best way for people to check it out? Is there a website people can there go is to? There is www.elicheesecake.com. And then you can, uh, that, you'll find our number for our cafe, <laughs> all the information where you can ship to anywhere in the 48 contiguous states ship cheesecakes. We have the two uncut for this project if you'd like to try it. We have the Founders Day, his orig uh, Eli's original four mm -hmm. flavors in a little four pack in mini cheesecakes. Great to come Cheesecake down. heaven. Cheesecake thank heaven. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That is Chicago's famous Eli's Cheesecake, T-B-A-R-N-A-S at WGNTV.com. If you have a suggestion for the Chicago scene, that's T-Barnas at WGNTV.com. We'll see you.